Complacently com commentate on this incident, as I've read in a couple of letters to the editor, and commentate on the men in India. Let's look into our own backyards. Our experience at the Fiji Women's Crisis Center enables us to see and listen to women and girls' stories of sexual violations, often at the hands of men who they love and trust. We hear of terrible stories of sexual atrocities from women and girls who visit our center. The vi this vigil is a wake-up call, a big one, for all of us. Rape and sexual assaults do not occur in a vacuum. They are a culmination of generations of discrimination, inequalities that women and girls are subjected to from the time they are born. An internalized belief of women's and girls' status in our society as second-class citizens. A culture that determines women's subservient roles in society. Political systems that deny women their human rights. Encourage, encourage violence against women and deny them access to justice. We should all make a pledge to stop blaming women and girls for atrocities committed against them. They behave where they were at a particular time of night or day. We all have a right to be where we are, to dress as we want to. It's about time we started looking at the perpetrators. Strangely enough, whenever the media asks me why do these things happen, how can we stop it, and so on, and I always tell them that men have to change their behavior, we have to start looking at perpetrators, and so on, that part is often cut out of interviews. I wonder why. People would much rather look at girls' behavior, women's dressing, how they talk, where they are, who they mix around with. This has got to stop. We have to look at the mindset that enables men, the men who do these things, to violate women and girls. We need to examine the system that creates these perpetrators and change it. And those systems often begin at home, in our religious organizations, within our cultural and traditional structures. This is where the mindset begins. Today, the Fiji Women's Crisis Center. We have done this in the past, but today particularly, remembering the young woman in India who has enabled us to get together here tonight, though tragically. We call upon the men and the boys of this country, of Fiji, to come forward and make a pledge. And that pledge will go around the country we are going to make this call throughout the country to ensure that this must never happen here again. That they will not allow this to happen anymore. That they will learn more about issue and, uh, the issue of sexual assault and rape. Why it happens, how it happens, who are doing it, what is the mindset. Learn about it from the women and the girls change their own thinking, their own behavior, and have a positive influence on other boys and men to change their behavior, their attitude, their thinking. So I call upon everyone in this country to make an effort. We also call upon the governance system, the people who are in authority, the lawmakers, the law enforcement agencies, we also have problems around there. Let us all get together, make a pledge today. This is a symbol of the pledge I hope we all will be making throughout Fiji. And the people, all of us who are gathered here, I'm so glad today to see people I have never seen before, who have never come to our functions. So this has stirred something in our hearts, somewhere in our minds, where we say enough is enough, we need to get together. And I hope that this message, each one of us who is present here, will pass it on man, woman, boy or girl, that we will continue passing this message. Stop the violence, stop the violations of girls' and women's bodies and their integrity. And let us challenge systems that enable these men, the perpetrators of these kind of crimes, to continue this heinous behavior.
I'm here because I have a mother, I have a wife, I have a daughter, but also because I have a son. And I have many friends who I call sisters, some of whom are gathered here and some who have been through this terrible type of experience. As I was reflecting before coming here tonight, I read the words of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who not so long ago, marking the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, wrote, it is deeply saddening, though perhaps not shocking, unfortunately, to learn that around 70% of all women experience physical or sexual abuse during their lifetime. Despite the progress we have made, this world remains a cruel and arbitrary one for too many women and girls. Do not be fooled, however. This is not some so-called women's issue. After all, we know that more often than not, the violence suffered by women is inflicted by the men they share their lives with, their fathers, husbands, intimate partners. If the majority of women in this world have suffered at the hands of their men, how many millions of men must have hurt and abused women? How many millions of men have stood by and let it happen? If men overwhelmingly brutalize women, then men are overwhelmingly brutal. He says that this is something that we should not accept. And he calls on men and boys everywhere to take a stand against the mistreatment of girls and women by standing up for their rights. And it is by doing so that we as men truly measure up to being men. All we can do now is from today, from now, men have to change their mind. All men standing here, if you're looking at the girl or if you're looking at a lady in front of you, you think about it, what comes in your mind? Do you look at her as your sister? Do you look at her as your mother? Do you look at her as your friend? Or do you look at her just uh, just a material of sex. What girls are? Is, is a girl a material of sex? Is that what we uh, treat girls today now is? All men. We should think of it. And if the whole world is hearing this, and if, if every man is watching this, you should come to life that whatever you are doing to uh, women, whatever you are doing to girls, you're doing it the wrong way. Please, come to life. People came out, leaving the dead alone. People came out and sat beneath the tree to pray for the deceased, all knelt at their knees. Said the wise man, my dear friends, I hope you all agree. Our friend in need is a friend indeed. This is the time to be. We lost a girl, a daughter, a friend. Indeed, we are sad. Greatest tragedy one would have when someone is dead. No matter how many eulogies, today will be read. From far or near, she cannot hear because she is already dead. The duty of life has to be done. To keep alive, one has to run and run. Run from criminals, run from rapists. Keep running is not fun. Between this time, life will take many twists and turns. Many sufferings and destructions comes on women. Of all the agonies and deceptions, being raped is the cruelest, cruelest thing. Sure, one day, we all have to die. People will come to funeral to say goodbye. Do your duty and be always clean. Give and take, never be mean. People were curious about life and death, about how the girl was raped. They wanted to know in length and in breadth. Some said that death is inevitable after birth. It has nothing to do with money, crime and wealth. With priest arrival, atmosphere changed. According to the list, duties were rearranged. People started moving, the plan exchanged. The time of the funeral had to be rearranged. Yet the question remained in everybody's mind. Will the rapist suffer the same way? The poor girl suffered before dying. On this earth, after birth, she gave all she had. Then one day she goes away, leaving everything behind. The crisis is true, nothing to pretend. 
the question of life and death, no one can blend. You take the crisis the way you want. I took with my own friend. So, my poem ends here. But the question of life and death will never end. Thank you. Simran and I'm Shami Mizni, a long time baby of the center. <laughs> the poem I wrote today is titled, She Was My Sister, I Never Knew Her. She wakes up, dresses herself, hair tight, eyes sparkling. She is beautiful, she is my sister. Off to work, town or school, she goes about her day, meets her friends and whoever she wishes. She is entitled to after all, she is my sister. She is you, she is me, she is a daughter, a sister, an aunt, a cousin, a mother. Today, she is Dami. She was raped, she was abused. She was beaten and violated. She was left for dead. They did not kill. She is my sister. She may have grown up in a house of love. She may have grown up in a house of hate. But she never once imagined that this would be her fate. She was my sister. I never knew her. <laughs>